Yo, welcome to Working With Rod Studio Edition. So I got the studio edition where I'm in the studio and I share my mixing and mastering tidbits. I'm sharing everything, I'm giving everything away. I'm not keeping anything for myself. So anyhow, I'm just here to begin sharing with you guys um, what it's all about. Um, as much information as I can, I will. So here we're gonna start off with our very first, well, this is gonna be kind of my second. <laughs> so my second project that I'm sharing with you guys, it's Wapkenye by Walby. Go get the record if you can, go find it. Title, Apple Music, Spotify, go, go get it. When you listen to it, now you'll get a better understanding on, on at least the mixing and mastering portion of that creation. So yeah, do that. Anyway, let me let you guys in real quick. Um, so in this video, I'm not gonna go too in, in depth at all, but I'm just gonna give you just a quick breakdown on um, the session itself, uh, what I'm gonna be sharing with you guys along the way in the videos to come and everything like that. Just as I'm giving it away to you, give it away to other people, give it away to everybody else. <laughs> Don't be stingy, share. So I'm sharing with you guys, I'm just gonna let you in real quick um, on uh, just the overview of the Wap Renier uh, mix session. Um, I'm gonna just go through the subgroup so you guys can hear it overall as a whole, kind of get a glimpse of how everything fits in. So real quick, I'm just gonna play the band, the band section for you guys. Um, and leave out the vocals. really cool so really full it's a really full recording um, a lot of instrumentation um, uh, on on the percussive end it's just drums so no percuss no actual percussion no loop no nothing like that and bass guitar Justin Rains out of Georgia I believe um, keys, Sam Simon, um, I believe Sam Simon did all of the keys. So main keys, auxiliary, and the string arrangement in the reprise. Um, um, phenomenal job, as you can see, layering wise, um, what instruments were included. So keys, um, lines, um, synths, strings, pads, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a yeah, typical, um, um, typical gospel record compilation. <laughs> um, guitars, now guitars, on the other hand, I definitely have to say, very intricate. Whoever this guy was, I don't need this, I don't know what this is. Whoever this guy was, whoever this guy is, he is amazing. And, you know, just to share with you guys, this... Like he's an ox player. Like auxiliaries galore from pads to atmosphere. And yo, and then he gives you dry, like he'll give you, he gave me dry and he gave me his effects. Like printed separately. That's really dope. <laughs> I don't know many guys that do that. And all the green is his. So everything green is his. So it's actually really like guitar is super intricate. Now Sam was super intricate on his part too. In fact, Sam drove the arrangement. He he's the arranger essentially of the record. Um <laughs> but um but yeah so for the most part the 
Drums is uh, Mark McClary out of Orlando. Mark McClary is a well-known drummer. Plays for play, played for William McDowell, Fred, uh, Larue Howard. Like, uh, I mean, that's that's all I can remember off the top of my head. But really well known. Originally from South Florida, so shout out to South Florida. <laughs> South Florida, baby. Um, but, um, but yeah. Um, once again, I get into details and everything of what I did like and what I didn't like what I kept and what I removed as you can see I kept a, I kept some and I removed some so just in drums alone um, I didn't use every component that was given to me and as the as the engineer as the mixing engineer the producer or the artist trusts you to understand the vision and make it make sense and not everything that comes in the session makes sense um, so in our next videos we'll get into that and uh you know really get into detail as to why i made the choices that i make even all the way down to the plugins um the, from the organization all the way down to the organ organization of my session yo organization is key i have to point that out um for me organization is key um to completion um for you know and not missing any steps like not missing any detail if you really don't want to miss details, then then making sure, yo, that you have a checklist and that you keep up with it, it's imperative. Uh, let me get into the vocals real quick. Uh, BGVs. Phenomenal. Clean. Um, um, there are certain things that I left behind years ago as a producer, engineer. First things first, the first thing, very first thing that I left behind was sample rate. I don't record in 44. I try to avoid it at all costs. Um, and then, um, and people, people, people are like, a, a lot of people say they can't hear the difference. Um, engineers can, um, and believe it or not, you would hear the difference if the session was tracked in 44 versus the session being tracked in 96, but most sessions are only tracked in one sample rate. So it's really hard to, uh, compare, but I know, I just know anything. I know what anything above 48 sounds like. Um, and I know when something is tracked in 40, 44. Um, and there are telltale signs, especially in the high end. Um, a lot of artifacts in the high end, a lot of um, l lack thereof of clarity in the high end, so on and so forth. Um, um, you know, and I'll get into those details later. But one thing is for sure um, you can kind of hear, you can, you would definitely hear the difference if this was tracked in 96, like the vocals. Um, um, the artifacts and you can put, you can even hear the dissonance between the stacks. It's like almost like a rip. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, it's, it's weird. Um, but there are artifacts that are in, ended up, um, printing or ended up, end up in these sessions because, uh, these artifacts layer on top of each other, like. You know, and artifact on top of artifact is going to, um, it's going to create a lot of just weird situations. So you know, that's just my little soapbox moment. But anywho, um, vocals sound amazing though. <laughs> Vocally arranged, sound sound great. Um, well done. Um, Salil uh, currently lives in DR. Really dope guy, really anointed uh, worship leader, singer, artist, really dope guy. And so, yep, I'm sharing even my approach on how I mixed his vocals. So my choices on why I uh, <laughs> on why um, I do what I do in terms of compression, on in terms of panning, in terms of placement, even all the way down to the bus. 
what's on the bus and how I mix the group as a whole. So like all those things, all those details I get into my re my effects choices, um, you know, and I and I was stuck with waves too. I didn't at the time I didn't have my UAD plugins, so this was kind of like the next thing. Uh, J thirty seven. In fact, I don't think I use this for saturation per se. I think I used it for uh, width, stereo width, like kind of like a delay or whatever. So um um a uh, little plate one of my favorite plugins uh by um sound toys uh little plate yo <laughs> it's like literally just like three knobs <laughs> but it's amazing um but anyway i'll just get into you know those details later on and then oh final let me just get into wallby's thing and there's one thing that i want to mention about lead vocals lead vocals um Well, let's just say this. Records are meant to be intentional. Like, these studio records and there are live records. I get live records. Live records is you're capturing, the, you're capturing the moment. Whatever happens in the moment stays in that moment. Right? But studio, you have control of that creation. And so we are very intentional about how we record the vocals. We're intentional about every word, every note, every run. Um... The cleanliness of it, the placement, like where he stands, is he singing in the mic, so on and so forth. Like we're very intentional about those those things and you can see it like this is how we re record, um, you know, and we also create too. like perfect example. Like, you know. Why can't a lead singer sing background too? <laughs> but I say all that to say, like, yo, we're very intentional about the creation, making sure that every component and every piece makes sense. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, why can't a lead why can't a lead singer sing background? <laughs> so um, but anyway, that's all part of creation. So we're very intentional. Um, we're very intentional about cleanliness too. So breath breath noises we we take all that stuff out and we're very intentional of, of you know why we take all that stuff out it's all about making sure it's as clean as possible as transparent as possible removing all artifacts so yeah you see it but we'll get into those details once we get to that video anyhow y'all go purchase the record it is a really good record amazing experience it was fun um what i will do is on this channel i will put the brief videos and then on the patreon um i'll put the in-depth process from beginning to end from me in the raw session all the way to the final mix and master how about that y'all with that i'm definitely with that i thank you for subscribing i thank you for liking i thank you for sharing this is working with rod studio edition <laughs> we're gonna see you in the next video deuces